In the far north of Australia lies the rugged, inhospitable plateau of Arnhem Land. On the northeastern corner live the Aboriginal people of Yerkala. a century, the people of the Arnhem Land coast have used the sturdy dugout canoe to travel from the mainland to the distant islands. Fishermen travel far out to sea in search of greenback turtles. children spend many happy hours on the beach and in the shallow waters. Their main playthings are small wooden canoes. Constant practice in these craft prepares them for the fishing expeditions of adult life. spill into the water is just a joke, but each time it happens, the lads learn something of the need for balance in a craft which requires skillful handling. The little model is a perfect reproduction of a sailing canoe. The rigging is made from twisted strands of hibiscus bark. There's no cord left, but a strip of bark will do just as well. Now she's ready for her preliminary trials and her maiden voyage. She'll do.
travel over the maze of swamps, lagoons and rivers, the Aborigines use a canoe made from the bark of a eucalyptus tree. The bark is stripped from a tree without knots or cracks. Individual trees belong to Aboriginal tribal groups. Ownership is respected and no one will touch trees belonging to others. In the dry season, the coast dwellers sleep under the stars or maybe they build a rough bark lean-to as a windbreak. In the wet season, they take a little more trouble, but not much more. Home building has no architectural problems, no shortages of labour or materials. The canoe makers are now really on the job. They've soaked the bark strip in the waters of the creek until thoroughly sodden. Next, they build a fire. Malvin, the fire maker, uses a method well known to many primitive peoples. It usually takes less than a minute to make fire. Malvin rapidly rotates the stick between his hands, causing the powdered wood dust at the base to ignite. He tips the smoldering powder into a pad of dry grass and holds it in the wind. In a few moments, there is a flaming fire under the strip of sodden bark. The steam permeating the bark makes it pliable. The turtle hunters scan the waters for a sign of their prey. fish, but turtles are wanted today. Turtles are vegetable feeders and live on sea plants. Being reptiles, they must surface to breathe. When the harpooner stands, the man at the stern paddles to within 20 feet of the turtle. After the harpoon has hit its mark, the turtle is played on the rope line. Children at play on the beach show keen powers of observation. One Juck, who has caught and eaten many lizards, knows well how to draw them in the sand. <laughs> Tracking means food. By drawing the tracks of the animals, the children learn the cunning art of the hunter. A crocodile trap. The track of a turtle coming on shore to lay her eggs. The children illustrate tales of hunting by molding in the sand the fish and animals of their environment.
bark is one of the most valued commodities in the economy of Arnhem Land. It's used for many purposes, from coffins to canoes. Here, it comes in handy for roofing the wet weather shelter. In the shipbuilding department, things are beginning to move, and it's time to put her on the slipway. Sand and earth are heaped around the bark to support it. Stakes are driven into the ground roughly in the shape of the canoe. The shipwright, after making holes with a simple wooden awl, draws split lawyer vine through the bark and pulls the prow of the canoe together. tools have been used by the Aborigines ever since the Malays visited these coasts several centuries ago. The Aborigines use the sap from beneath the bark of one of the jungle trees to cork their craft. The children don't have to worry about hut building or canoe making, but they do have a definite interest in the return of the turtle hunters. Food is always equally divided, and the children know that they'll come in for their share of the tastier morsels. All over the beach, the children are on the move. The turtle often reaches a considerable size, and some of the biggest weigh up to 500 pounds. Now here's the recipe for roast turtle. Place your turtle on a fire and lightly scorch. Then disembowel the corpse. Fill the cavity with stones previously heated in the fire. Seal the opening with grass. Then place the turtle back on the fire. Serve piping hot and eat with the fingers. As for the canoe makers, it's taken them less than five hours to have their craft ready for the launching. Maybe she doesn't look like the Queen Mary, but she'll serve her makers well when they search the swamps for bird's eggs, lily roots, and water snakes. She may last two or three seasons with kind treatment. If she doesn't, well, there's always more bark about.
Now the whole family is in its new home. A shelter against the rain and the mosquitoes which breed in the wet season. The women look after the camp, cook, make string bags, hunt goannas, lizards, and search for the plant foods. They are busy people. Some centuries ago, the Malays introduced smoking, and with it the long pipe, which only holds a pinch of tobacco. childhood, the youngsters learn the complicated rituals of their own ceremonies. The dance is instinctive. Rhythm, gesture, movement and music all find expression in these simple performances. time for the evening meal. And at Yurkala there's plenty for all. In Arnhem Land there's no question who is head of the household. Father's comforts are everybody's care. He sleeps alone on the top story, well protected by the smoke of the fire from the torments of the mosquitoes. And as the evening falls, a crew of fishermen paddle slowly homeward. Thank you. 